So there she is, the elk huntress. Watch her as she attempts to capture the elusive elk on her mobile cellular device. Hi all, welcome back to my channel and our traveling adventures. On May 29th, we woke up early and drove over to the Great Smoky Mountains in hopes to see some elk. Our first destination was Cataluchi, where we were told we might find them. Unfortunately, we did not see any elk, and the video that we had taken of some of the places we visited, such as the Old Beach Grove Schoolhouse, Palmer Chapel, and Hiram Caldwell House, mysteriously disappeared from both mine and Miss Kayak 7C's cameras, so I have nothing to show of the morning activities except a little bit of the Caldwell Fork Trailhead Bridge. With no elk spotted, we decided to drive over to Cherokee, North Carolina, in hopes of having better luck. Most photograph view. Oh, I don't know if it's free, but... In 1961, my grandpa took my grandma and dad on vacation in the Great Smoky Mountains, and they stopped off at this Maggie Valley roadside attraction. I learned of that vacation after recovering some old family footage from 8mm film. When we drove by, I recognized it and I knew I had to stop, check it out for myself, and compare their view in 1961 to today's view in 2021. The observation tower was constructed in 1988, so when they visited, they weren't as high up as we were able to go. I thought it was certainly cool to be standing at a place my grandpa once stood. Here is some family video from 1961 to compare with 2021. What do you think of this view? Whether or not this is indeed the most photographed spot of the Smokies, it certainly is a great view and at 50 cents per person to climb the tower, I thought it was money well spent. After the short stop, we were back on the way driving to the Blue Ridge Parkway toward Cherokee and the O'Connor Lefty Visitor Center in hopes to see some elk. You certainly can't complain about this timeless, beautiful drive. After arriving at the O'Connor Lefty Visitor Center, the guides told us the best time to see the elk would be in the evening. So with time to spend, we visited the grounds next to the Visitor Center. There was an old mountain farm museum with a collection of several log buildings which depicted a typical mountain farm in the pioneer Appalachia. The first structure we saw was the John Davis cabin, which was built in 1900. This cabin was originally located on Indian Creek, several miles to the west above Bryson City. The cabin was constructed with matched chestnut logs joined with dovetail notches. Next was the meat house, which protected the most valuable commodity on the mountain farm, the meat supply. The most common meat was pork. Without refrigeration, salting and smoking were the most common means of preserving the meat. The chicken house. There's chickens in here. Oh, there are real chickens in here too. Hi. There's a lot of chickens in there. Ooh, they're mad. Okay, let's back up. Apples were a staple of the mountain family. Summer apples were stored on the upper floor, and hardier winter apples were put in ground floor bins. Mostly structures were brought here from various locations and put together to show visitors what type of structures would typically be found on an Appalachian farm. In fact, had this been a real farm, these structures would have been found spread out and further away from the farmland so that the good flat soil would be used for garden and crops. This structure is the Enloe Barn. It was built around 1880 by Joseph Enloe, who owned the land where the museum is now located. This relatively large barn housed livestock in its lower stalls and grain and fodder in its lofts. This is the only structure that was originally located in O'Connor Lefty and sits only 200 yards from its original location. Not every farmhouse had a blacksmith shop. Generally in an area, there would be one or two blacksmiths who would barter their services in exchange for other goods or services. 
A reliable source of drinking water was important to selecting a house site. A good spring met that need and also provided a means for keeping perishable foods. Containers of perishable foods were placed in the trough and were refrigerated by the cool water flowing around them. After visiting the old Mountain Farm Museum, we decided to drive around and check out more of the area in hopes that we might find that elk. This was the reason we came after all. It wasn't long before we spotted some walking on the side of the road. Right here, up ahead, up ahead. Right here. Elk once roamed the southern Appalachian Mountains. They were eliminated from the region by overhunting and loss of habitat. The last elk in North Carolina was believed to have been killed in the late 1700s. Reintroduction of the elk into the Great Smoky Mountains National Park oh, no. began in 2001 when 25 elk were brought from the land between the lake's national recreation area along the Tennessee-Kentucky border. In 2002, the park imported another 27 animals. Is this female? These elk walking along the side of the oh, road no, attracted quite the crowd and it started to back up traffic as drivers slowed down to get a good look at them. If you're wondering where their antlers are, in early spring, the days are starting to get longer. Male elk have low levels of testosterone. They drop their antlers and almost immediately start to grow a new set. With our first elk sighting, we decided to go grab some food, then come back and hopefully see some more elk. Mingus Creek Trail. All right guys, we had this strange idea to go for a walk after we ate a meal. And so now we're walking down a trail and we have no idea where it goes. So let's check it out. Yeah, I thought I saw some tire tracks before. So this has got to be wide enough for a car to get through. All right, guys. On our way back, we spotted some elk. Let's see if I can't zoom in on them. Sometimes zoom, so it might be a little rocky. But there's one. The other one started to walk away. Oop. Let's try to bring it back. So as you can see, he's a little ways out there from where we're standing. Once we're on the trail, you don't want to get too close to him because this is their home. We're just visiting. And now I don't see him. As quick as we found him, he is gone. Oh, here comes some more. Look at this. That one's got something around his neck. Not that one, the one behind it's got something around his neck. Probably some kind of GPS. Yeah, it's got a tag on its ear. So it's number 89. Yeah. It's a racing elk. Mm. Oh, there's the other one. They are so close to us. I think we're just not going to move. It knows where, they know we're here. If we pay it no attention. How freaking cool. So there's three right here. There's a fourth one that's still 
in the woods, but I lost sight of it. And as we were coming back, we were treated to these elk who came out to feed. in my car. We had quite the day visiting the Great Smoky Mountains, despite the lost video footage and the lack of elk at Cataluchi. We ended this day with quite the performance in Cherokee. We may have to revisit this fall when the male elk have their antlers. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed our visit to the Great Smoky Mountains. If you did, click that like button. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I hope you consider subscribing. Be sure to check out Kayak 7 Seas on Facebook and Instagram. Until the next time, I hope to see you out on the water someday.